The tracker has something called a corner pin feature. It allows you to identify the corners of a four-sided object and then track the motion of that object and then replace it with something. So typically you're taking a picture out of a frame and replacing it with something else or adjusting, let's say, a TV screen or a computer monitor and replacing the contents with something else. You can use the corner pin feature to do that. So to see how to do that, go to Working Files and go to After Effects Projects and open up 1603 Corner Pins. Our goal here is to track the four corners of this monitor and replace the image there with the shot of the desert. I think that guy working in the lab is probably tired of sitting in that cold lab and wants to head out to the warm desert. So we'll fulfill part of his wishes. What I want to do now is track the motion of those four corner pins. So I need to go over to the tracker to do that. I tell it that the motion source is the microscope. That sometimes turns it off, so I gotta turn it back on like that by selecting it again. So now we need to say, what are we gonna do? We're gonna track motion. And then we're gonna say, what kind of track, track type? The default is transform where you're following an object, but I wanna do something different. Going down here to perspective corner pin. I could choose parallel corner pin, but parallel corner pin has some complexity to it in terms of deselecting one of the corners. So I'm going to stick with perspective, which is really intuitive and fairly easy to use. When I click on that, you've got four track points here. We need to attach them to the four corners here. So let me just zoom in a bit by doing Control or Command Plus a couple times. There you go. Now we're going to set up those four track points. I'm going to take this first one, drag it to the left-hand corner. It's going to scroll over there. I'm going to go a little bit outside the edge of the screen there. That should work right there. Going down here and get the next one, drag it up here. You can see how this works, I think. It's pretty straightforward. Get this corner down here on the right. There you go. And get this corner down here on the left. There you go. Now let me pull back up by going shift forward slash, and we're going to track this in just a moment. Let me show you a problem with this clip. Now you see the computer monitor there is just not quite touching the screen, which is okay with us. It's not going to be an issue, but when I go forward here, you're going to see that the microscope is going to cut across the front there. So then how do we make the desert scene go behind the microscope? A little bit of a trick. We're going to use the roto brush tool to take care of that. So let's go back here and get rolling here. I need to track the motion. So I'm going to go down here and analyze forward. And here we go. I'll let you know if it has any problems. At some point, we're going to pause it, though. So far, so good. Right about there, I'm going to stop. As you can see, that we're going to run into the microscope. Let me zoom in by going Control plus or Command plus. There we go. What's going to happen when we get to the microscope? I'm going to continue to analyze forward here. And now it's going to go out of town. Not good. But now I'm going to bring it back down here where it belongs. So we're going to reset it up again right there. That should be good right there. And we're going to continue to analyze forward from that point. And we're going to get rid of all those offending keyframes in the middle there. OK, now uh, we're done. Great. I want to go back and take a look at those keyframes. So I'm going to go down the microscope here and press the U key to display all the keyframes, of which there will be a lot because we have four sets of track points. We're interested in track point four here. I'm going to go down to track point four. There it is. Let's go back to where we had the last good keyframe. Right there is the good keyframe. Let me see where we are first. I'm going to zoom in on that spot by pressing the plus key a couple of times. So that's the good keyframe right there. So I want to take care of the stuff before that. I'm going to marquee select right down there and get rid of a bunch of keyframes just as kind of a way to tell me where the bad guys are. Let's go back in time here to see where things went bad. So the last good keyframe was right there. I think it's the last good keyframe. So let me zoom out a bit so I can see what's going on. We want to get rid of all these keyframes in between here. These guys are all going to be throwing things off. Get rid of all of them. Delete. Let's see how this thing goes from point A to point B now. As long as it kind of continues to go straight from one keyframe to the next, I think we're going to be all right. So there you go. We just got rid of the bad guys, and I think it's going to settle down pretty well. Right there, I might want to pull it down a little bit, perhaps. So I got this guy. I'm going to hover there for a second. Just pull it down a bit. And that adds a couple of keyframes there. There we go. And I think that's fine. Okay, so we got the keyframes all set up. Let's just go up here and close this so it's not so crowded looking. Now we need to apply this to desert. So we need to go down here and edit target. I noticed that desert's already selected because that's the only option. We can't apply this to the current layer. We need to apply it to something else. Let's just click on edit target anyways just to show you that. There's nothing else available there, just desert. So click OK. Remember, clicking OK is not enough. You've got to apply it. So let's apply it. 
And there you go, we've applied it. And now you're not seeing anything. Let's just see how that works. Let's see what's going on here. That's because the eyeballs turned off for desert because you needed to be able to see the microscope. So turn that on. And there it is. Hallelujah. Let's go back a little bit and see how that worked. What's happened here is that we've applied what's called the corner pin effect to desert. I'll just click away here and select desert. And there's the corner pin effect. You can see how that works. And all these guys have been keyframed. If I open up desert, if I press U for desert, you can see the corner pin there is all those keyframes for the four corners of the corner pin effect. But now we need to deal with this microscope thing here. So let me show you how to do that. It's kind of a little trick. I'm going to go to the point where the microscope starts covering it up right about there. And I'm going to add another microscope layer here. So I'm going to just take the microscope up here. We're going to add another layer on top of desert right there. I'm going to trim to that point. Let me zoom out a bit so we can see what we got. I'm going to trim this thing to that point because we don't need anything up to that point. Right about there. What I want to do now is use the roto brush on this thing to then brush out the microscope there. So I'm going to double click on this to open the layer panel. Let me get the roto brush tool there. I want to select this thing. Your brush is a little large. Let me bring it down to the size, building the controller command key and dragging with the mouse. And now I'm going to draw a little line there like that. And that should be enough, look at that, to define the size of the microscope. And now we need to analyze forward. I'm going to pull this all the way to the end. And we'll analyze forward just by pressing the space bar. And I'm going to spare you the time here. I'll just kind of fast forward to the point that we're going to get to the end of this. But you can see it's doing a great job. It's going to roto brush this thing perfectly. Okay, the roto brush has done its magic. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to freeze it. Everything is done. Let's just take a look at just that layer now. I'm going to solo that layer and go back to the composition panel. And all you're going to see is just the thing that was inside the rotor brush, just the microscope. So we're going to put that on top of the desert scene. So it will cover up the desert scene as it goes by. And that way it'll look natural, right? Unsolo that. Let's go forward a little bit and see what happens there. Look at that, covering up the desert scene as if it really were behind them. How great is that, right, folks? This little layering allows you to do that. Let me show you one more little thing that you might encounter when you're working with something like this, and the screen is not actually totally perfectly rectangular, and there is a little bit of a bowing here that we want to deal with. So I'm going to zoom in a bit by doing Control or Command Plus to get in there. Pull this down just a bit. And I want to apply what's called the Bezier Warp to this screen. So I'm going to go to this desert shot here. Look up Bezier Warp. There's Bezier Warp. I'm going to apply that to the desert scene by double-clicking on it. And because of the way the order of things goes, you want to have the Bezier Warp above corner pin. Let's show it in context here now. When you use Bezier Warp, you can click on these handles and move things around a little bit, like so. You zoom in a little bit more, Control or Command Plus. Let's get this guy like that. You can see how we're adjusting the bowing of the screen a little bit. We can pull this thing up slightly like that of the screen there so it kind of more accurately fits the screen. And if you have a screen that has some serious bowing going on, then you want to use this for sure. And don't worry about the fact that that's covered up like that. I just have the microscope turned off for the time being. But you can adjust things like this as well. Pull things down a little bit. Pull it down overall like that. Make some small adjustments like this to have it fit nicely on that screen. Now we'll turn the microscope on. You can see how it covers it up. And I'll go shift forward slash to see that in full like that, and we'll click away from that. And now we have a finished product using the corner pin approach here inside the tracker.